is this technical committee and a certification committee. So up for the next few months, uh, there's still going to be this disparity between the one card not working on the opposing system. So what's kind of the goal timeline when everybody can confidently, you know, roam, if you will, the uh -huh. EV uh -huh. network? So, so you're right that, that this, is, this announcement is the launch. It's right. the coming together of, of the five founders. Uh, like I've talked about, <coughs> ChargePoint, uh, Car Charging, Blink, NRG, EVgo, BMW, and Nissan. We're also very pleased that we already have six other uh, new members and associates in Audi, Honda, right. BTC Power, FSEC, uh, SEMA Connect, and Portland General Electric, okay. so a very good part of the ecosystem coming coming to together, and then what you'll see us doing over the next uh, several months is is announcements of the different of the three phases of the release of this. Okay. So so look for for announcements coming, you know, in in the next few months over the next phases of this implementation. Okay, so we got network operators uh, like yourself. We've got. Uh, sounds about uh, four or five car companies now Correct. that are involved. Um, and then we've got, I heard, I wasn't sure who a couple of the companies were, but obviously Portland General Electric is a, uh, the a utility, utility energy operator company. in Portland, Oregon area. Yep. Uh, owned, by the way, by uh, Berkshire Hathaway, I believe, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Um, so and then, and then the final group was uh, charging station manufacturers. Oh, okay. All so, right. so some of those are, are so. So at some to... point, Aerovironment. I didn't hear them, but I assume Aerovironment would be in there. And you mentioned Siemens, I think. General I saw Electric. Sema, Sema Connect was who I mentioned. Right. Okay. Um, I think General Electric was doing. I don't know if they're actively involved in in that, but as as Rove, we've reached out to all of all okay. of the parties involved in this space. We've reached out to all the companies you mentioned, to all the other car companies as well. We we hope to get to make this very inclusive as, as a neutral place where we can all come together and, and work out these industry problems to accelerate the adoption of electric vehicles. Okay. Can you take us back a little bit, what was the catalyst for this? I mean, who said, hey, this is crazy, we got too many different standards, uh, we got, you know, Sprint owners versus AT&T, or, you know, that whole thing, and we want to be able <laughs> We actually, we actually talk about it being users. like the, the, the banking ATM system with your right. bank card being able to use it. Right. Um, it. It really came about as an upswell from the drivers. As they're using their cars, they, they need to, to get more access. The car companies then talking, working with all of, all of us networks uh, really helped to, to coalesce us. Um, and as an industry, we've... we've tried to, to, to look at this um, you know, one or two times before <clears throat> and you can see uh, companies like Nissan who have you know, uh, bravely tried to help move the industry forwards as well as, well as BMW um, ahead of Rove but really we look at Rove as being uh, taking all of the learnings over the last eight years and, and bringing that together and saying this is, this is the right forum for the United States to come together as a whole and, and adopt common standards to, to interoperate and to allow roaming to be simple. So how long has this sort of been fermenting in the, uh, in, in the VAT? The, the founders have been working on this for, for over a year before the, okay. before the announcement. Okay. It's, it's been a year of, uh, of good work. I really uh, want to thank all of, the, all of my fellow board members uh, as well as the, the different committee members, the marketing committee, the technical committee, the certification committee for their efforts to date and their, their continued help on, on getting this, uh, this organization, this association up and running. Okay, so I imagine like any one organization similar to this, if you're a member, there's a contribution that you need to make to help obviously fund this because you, you know, if you're having a third party doing certification things, that's all money that's needed. Um, yep. You probably at some point while initially you've got you know some volunteer staff coming from ChargePoint or NRG or whoever um, you know there's going to have to be some kind of a a full-time you know staff that's sort of overseeing this and directing it and growing it um, so is, is that sort of ChargePoint contributed X number of dollars and BMW and so on? Uh, you, you're close but, but not quite right um, 
Uh, we're set up as a, a non-profit trade association, so a 501c6 organization. Think of us as similar to uh, the Wi-Fi association or the HDMI association. Um, the Rove Association, it, it's, it is planned to be staffed with, um, with part-time contributions from the, the founders and the members okay. uh, who can make up the committee. Um, and so it's, it's not expected to take on full-time staff. Uh, as a non-profit, each company contributes its own time and its own expenses. Okay. Uh, we, do, we do publish our, our bylaws on our website. Um, we'll be publishing the pricing for members and for associates. We just have two tiers of membership. It's very simple. Come in and find out as an associate member what, what Rove is all about. Step up to become a member when you want to participate on the, on the committees and take an active role in, in helping this industry move uh, faster towards uh, a roaming future. Okay. Well, we have, in effect, we have another we have another network out there that's fairly extensive. In fact, I think the last number I saw was something like 858, something like that. Chargers uh, within the last year that Tesla has built their supercharger network. Um, those those networks are specifically designed for Tesla vehicles. Um, I would bet there's a few Nissan Leaf owners out there and, and i3 owners who would love to have be able to have access to those. So is there any kind of dialogue going on with the guys over at Tesla? So, uh, as I said earlier, we, we absolutely reached out to all of the car companies, <clears throat> uh, uh, in, including Tesla amongst them. Um, we, would, we would love to see common compatibility between all EV charging to to make it simpler and to make uh, common access to all charging spots that are out there. As you say, Tesla has some uh, proprietary standards in place right now, which, uh, which, which makes it difficult for other cars to, to use those stations as they are today. Yeah. Uh, however, I would say um, we would love to find a way to get t uh, Tesla to join Rove. We think that they're doing a great deal of good for the industry. Um, we think that they're uh, helping to put infrastructure in the ground. Um, what may not be so, so common knowledge is that when they put infrastructure in, Tesla often tries to put in more electrical supply so that um, companies can come along and put in electric vehicle charging for all the other cars that are there. So, um, you know, Tesla, it, they have their own business model, their own company, um, but they're doing a great deal of good for the industry. and, and uh, it would be great to try and find a way, and I think they want to find a way over time to help standardize with the industry as well. Okay, so I'm a um, Tesla, no, I, I'm a Nissan LEAF driver, okay. When can I expect that I can start roaming this network? Six months, a year, 18 months? Oh, I, I, I think, well, well, Within a year, like I say, I think the phases that I talked about are, are coming in the next few months. Okay. Um, and they, they start, you know, almost immediately with being able to see and view all of the stations on, on the app that you, you choose to and their real-time availability. So I, I, it's not, you know, it's not a long period of time. Okay. It's a matter of months, you know, please look out for the announcements as we make them at the upcoming events. Okay. So now, the operators of these systems, for example, there may be um, a Kroger's, for example, that has charge point um, systems in, and they may decide to make those free to their customers for mm -hmm. you know, marketing reasons, um, or they mm -hmm. may put a nominal fee of a, you know, a dollar an hour or something, whatever that, you know, whatever they come up with. It, how yeah. how are you handling that where that that billing or non billing mechanism within that? Since some of these units are owned by, they might be part of your network, but they're actually owned by private corporations or individuals. Yep, yep. So um, I, I'll answer that in in two parts. Uh, first, first the part of being able to use it, uh, which which we might term as uh, authentication. Right. And then secondly, the payment, if there's a payment amount to it. 
So for those companies that have, have made it public, which is the number we talked about, um, we already, between the three networks, have 17,500 of these public uh, charging spots available um, through our, each of our networks, and we hope to bring them all available to a Rove carrying uh, driver, Rove card carrying driver very soon. Um, while those public, while those stations are, are uh, made available to the public by the Kroger's in your example, then they will uh, automatically be able to accept uh, a card from another network operator that is Rove certified uh, once that comes into place. They will just tap their card or start a charging session on their mobile app as they would one of their own stations. If that station's uh, free, then it will most likely be free on any of these. If it's for a fee, it will most likely be for the same fee. Okay. We have to be we have to be a little you know have to put a little asterisk by that right. and say that um, Rove as a trade association cannot enforce uh, specific policies on, on other third party companies. But I will say that our goal as an organization and the goal of the founding members is that uh, roaming is at minimal to no extra cost to a driver. Again, that the goal of this and the reason that it's, it's created as a non-profit trade association is for the betterment of, of the EV industry. And so it was very important to us as we got together as founders to say that this is only going to be successful if it's, if it's not punitive to uh, to an EV driver. So, so we've, we're working very hard. We, we've worked as the founders and we continue to work with the new members to, uh, to make sure this is a minimal or no cost uh, to, do, to do roaming on these stations. Okay. That's our goal. Okay, very cool. So what, what's happening exciting? I think it is very cool, yeah. yeah. What's happening at ChargePoint before we wrap up here? Anything I sh uh, you want to tell us? Uh, extremely busy. Um, I think we see a lot, uh, a lot of enthusiasm from the drivers. Uh, we see a lot of, of use of the stations. Um, we continue, as, as we said earlier, to see a lot of growth in in people putting in level two and fast charging. Um, particular interest in the fast charging area because it's newer um, and because there's so much need for it. So um, at ChargePoint, um, again, putting my putting my Rove hat aside, coming back to ChargePoint. We're busy working with BMW and Volkswagen on the express corridors, so putting in fast charging up and down from Portland to San Diego and from okay. Boston to uh, uh, DC. So that, that project's progressing very well, expects to complete in the next few months. Um, it was something that was announced last, uh, uh, last January okay. and uh, has been, been really rolling ahead. All right. Good. Now, are these are these chargers that you guys are building? Because uh, I know you, you ChargePoint, you know, had built their own your own mm -hmm. different chargers. Are these your level three chargers, or are they or DC fast they're, charge? They're, they're a combination. Um, okay. a, a lot of them are uh, technology that that uh, BMW has helped bring to market. Oh, okay. So the BMW fa uh, i fast charger. Um, uh, some of them are the, the 50 kilowatt uh, charge point, uh, what we call our CPE 200, uh, because we, we number it as being charging at a rate of 200 miles per hour if your car was able to, to okay. refuel for that long. <laughs> right. Pretty cool. 200 miles an hour. Yeah, there we go. So, <laughs> very cool. All right. Well, so, Ro, we're going to be able... Does everybody get a new card then? Do, do they, they send out... Once the uh, system's up and running, or yes, we we as the we, we have to work out as part of the uh, like I said the phase three, but uh, yes, I think people can expect a, a new card as we roll through that part of the program. Okay, very good. Well, look, Simon, thank you so much for uh, Bill. Thank you explaining this the system to us. I know I read a number of articles, but they didn't answer some of the questions I had, and you've, you've done that quite well, so I appreciate it. Thank you. That. You have a great understanding of it. It's been, it's been my pleasure to talk to you about All this. All right. Great. Hey, do me a favor. Get me a terrific photo of you with a charger, and we'll make that the cover shot. How's that? Okay, perfect. All right. I'll good. make that happen. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, Bill. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.